All right, what's up guys? This is Coop with CNT Designs again. Um, and we're gonna go through another bill. The good thing is as many bills as Democrats put out, I will never ever run out of content. But this time we're going to go through HR 125. This was proposed by everybody's favorite, Sheila Jackson Lee. All right, this was proposed on January 4th of 2021 excuse me, January 4th of 2021 had, uh, I can't even keep count of the bills that were introduced right then. Basically two days before January 6th, two days before Joe Biden was actually in office, these bills were already loaded up, ready to go. Matter of fact, the text for a lot of these bills didn't come out till weeks later because there were so many bills that came out within just a matter of days of basically January of 2021. So this is entitled the Gun Safety Not Sorry Act. Well, in honor of Sheila Jackson Lee, we are introducing the Big Green Meanie. And the Big Green Meanie ain't sorry about anything either. In fact, he basically tells Sheila Jackson Lee that she is sorry. Sheila Jackson Lee is a sorry excuse for a human being. And Sheila Jackson Lee can eat a bag of D's. She can eat them with a fox. She can eat them wearing socks. She can eat them with, on a plane. She can eat them on a train. She can eat them on the first thing smoking. And she can eat the biggest bags I've ever seen in my life. As long as she is getting out of any sort of legislature. This woman is insane. So <laughs> let's get into this act. Uh, and let's see whether I can get through this without blowing a gasket. So this is the Gun Safety Not Sorry Act. And what this is doing is, is it's saying you need a seven-day waiting period before a semi-automatic firearm, any semi-automatic firearm, a silencer, which people would be glad for that since it takes like six months to a year to get a silencer. So they'd be cool with seven days. Um, Armor-piercing ammunition, and that's an interesting topic in and of itself because their definition of armor-piercing ammunition is insane or a large capacity ammunition magazine may be transferred which means any of your regular capacity 30 round mags would have to be serialized and tracked so for me to go to the local gun store wherever order them offline to get a regular capacity magazine anything over 10 rounds which is defined later in this bill I would have to get a background check and wait 10 days before, 10 business days, 10 government business days before that could be transferred to me. Yeah, we're going to need another smoke. So let's get into this. And I've got my notes and I've got the text of the bill pulled up on the laptop. And one of these days I'll get good enough where I can show both of these things in real time. Um <laughs> And it's just crazy. So let's see. Let's look at the notes. Ah, da, 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 da. Let's get into the findings. Because the findings in this bill, well, it's a bunch of twisted facts and lies, just like always. So this says the Congress finds as follows. Point one that she goes through. Um, there is nearly, which I thought that kind of, yeah, well, that, well, that may fit. Um, there is nearly one mass shooting per day in the United States, 355 mass shootings in 2015. She's using a lot of old numbers because this bill is a retread. I think the latest date this shows is 2017. She's been proposing stuff like this for a long time and she just keeps retreading it and resending it. All right. Um, let's see. Point two in December, 2012, a gunman walking into Sandy Hook Elementary um, school in Newtown, Connecticut, and killed 20 children, six adults, and himself. Uh, she piles up bodies like damn scaffolding to be able to stand on them to try to get her point across. Nobody is responsible for that shooting but the monster who did it. And that dude should burn in hell forever. And for those parents, I, I can't imagine their grief. But the rest of us gun owners... And the firearms we own, 
We're not responsible for that. That's his actions, not ours. Um, get into point three. Since December 2012, um, there have been at least 1,518 mass shootings with at least 1,715 people killed and 6,089 people wounded. What she won't tell you is, is most of these shootings are things like drive-by shootings that are gang-related, um, gang-related shootings where they just pull up in the front yard. They don't even drive by. They just pull up in the front yard and start shooting. It's all basically a lot of drug-related stuff. Um, it's all about the narco economy, which is another issue that the federal government created in the first place. So I'm not saying those shootings don't matter, but what I am saying is, is we know the issues behind those shootings that could be solved without taking anybody's rights away. Uh, let's get to point three, uh, or was that point three? No, that was point three. And I'm shooting these videos off the cuff, guys. I don't want to edit a whole lot. I want this to be very natural and we just walk through them. So we're on to point four. On the night of October 1st, 2017, the gunman opened fire on a large crowd of concert goers at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada, leaving 58 people dead, 527 people injured. Um, those who know anything about this case, this guy supposedly blew out a window um, a couple floors up on a casino, used bump stocks off of bipods, and just basically rained down fire on concert goers. And this guy apparently had checked out a couple concerts before he did this one. There are a couple extremely troubling things about this shoot, and I won't go on to all of them. I will say this. Bump stocks in and of themselves are absolutely not machine guns. They don't function as machine guns. You can't take a bump stock loaded up with a magazine and all of a sudden fire full automatic with one pull of the trigger. But I also want to know how he fired bump stocks off of bipods because bipods would restrict the movement of the bump stock to bump fire the gun. And anybody who sees this, if you can explain that to me and kind of rationalize that shit, hey, dude, I'll roll with you. I don't know what I don't know. And I know nothing about bump stocks besides it's basically a spring-loaded piece of plastic. And that's all it is. It does not make a gun become full auto. Um, let's get to the next one. Okay, she goes into the everyday shootings. Uh, point three. Uh, every day on average, 92 Americans are victims of gun violence resulting in more than 33,000 deaths annually. That's crock of horse shit. Three quarters of those, or two thirds, whatever you want to call it, are suicides. People that would have killed themselves regardless of whether they had a gun or not. They would have used pills, ropes, carbon dioxide, they carbon monoxide. They just would have parked in their garage and threw a hose off their tailpipe, threw it in the cab of the car. People who really want to commit suicide will commit suicide. They're not joking. They're not crying for help. They're going to end it. People who eat around the edges, they're not the ones who are going to commit suicide. Uh, if you don't believe me, look at, look at the um, statistics out of Japan. I know I mentioned it on a previous video. They have no firearms. They have a higher suicide rate than America. If you're dedicated and you're going to do it, you're going to do it. You're not going to BS around with it. It's going to be a done deal. So firearms... When they talk about this 33,000 deaths a year, most of those are suicides. A lot of those are people who are committing crimes. They're actually murdering people with firearms. I don't think that number actually accounts for people in defensive situations that use a firearm and actually kill somebody. And they don't account for accidental deaths, stuff like that. Um, the actual firearms murder rate in the United States is very low compared to the fact that we have somewhere along the lines of about 360 million firearms in the United States right now that the government knows about. If firearms were the issue, 33,000 deaths a year would be cheap. Uh, let's get into the next one. Um, 
States with higher gun ownership rates have higher gun murder rates, as much as 114% higher than states with lower gun ownership rates. I can't even begin to distill that level of bullshit down. And you can look at you can look at leftist sources, something like the Trace, where they document every gun death that they can possibly document, and you can look at where these gun deaths happen. And it's sad to say, but they are in lower income areas, high drug in or high drug um in well, we'll say high drug income areas. They got a really high narco economy in these areas. And you have a very high percentage of people with zero respect for human life. Zero. Again, gun ownership rate to murder rates, violence rates with firearms, when you look at the actual numbers, do not equate. Because in a lot of states with higher gun ownership rates, with higher rates of people carrying firearms, the crime rate actually drops. And you can look at that in DOJ statistics because they do track it. She's lying to you right here. And she's going to lie th to you through the whole thing. So, I mean, it's no big deal. Besides the fact that this lady actually makes laws that govern everything that we do as firearms owners. Nothing to worry about, right? All right. Um, let's see. She gets into a recent study by the Centers of Dece Disease Control, the CDC and Prevention, um, looking at 30 years of homicide data found um, that for every 1% increase in the state's gun ownership rate, there is a nearly 1% increase in firearms homicides. You could almost work those numbers, almost, if you didn't account for the fact that the CDC also says that there are somewhere along the lines of about a million defensive gun uses in the United States per year. 